Hello, grade eight. How are you? This is Miss Sara, and I will be teaching you physics this year. Uh, I know it's a bit strange to start uh, the school year virtually, but I think we can make it work. Okay, so we will start with chapter one that is titled Velocity of a Moving Object. The objectives that we're going to cover during this week's lecture is that you guys are going to be able to distinguish between time and duration. You will know the average velocity and you'll know how to calculate it. Also, you'll know the units of time, distance and velocity according to the SI system. Instant and duration. What is the difference between instant and duration? Do you have any idea about this? It's okay, let's give an example. So the physics period starts at 9 a.m. and ends at 10 a.m. So what is 9? What is 10? If I asked, when, when does the physics period start? It starts at 9. So let's call 9 T1. Okay, when does it end? It ends at 10. So let's call 10 T2. Now T1 and T2 are called instants. They tell me exactly at what time something happens. Now the time interval between T1 and T2 is called a duration. So a duration, as if I'm asking you, okay, the physics period starts at 9 and ends at 10. What if I asked, how long is the physics period? What would you do? You would subtract 10 minus 9 equals 1 hour, right? So this is the duration. We call it delta T. So delta T is equal to T2, second instant, minus T1. So the definition of the instant, the instant T is the time at which an event takes place, such as the beginning and the end of an event. The duration is the time between two instants, delta T equals T2 minus T1. Now we're going to get to know what is a chronometer. Okay, so we're doing a little activity it says interactive, it means that this activity is going to let us know what is a chronometer. Now guys, this is a chronometer, this is its picture actually, okay? And every time, every time you see the word click me on a picture, it means it is clickable. You can click it, okay? In the PDF PowerPoint that I sent you, you can open it and click on this and it will take you to uh, a simulation that uh, where the experiment is going to happen. Okay, so this is where I'm going to go right now. I'm going to click on this and I'll tell you what we need to do. And you have to do it at home too. Okay, so let's go. Okay, guys, so I just clicked on the click me chronometer and it opened this page okay you can see this is a chronometer uh, it says here start and here it says restart and it's like uh, it's like a stopwatch okay so first of all let's follow the instructions it says here follow the steps and answer the following questions click on the chronometer and indicate the first instant so what is the first in instant Okay, it is at zero. It hasn't started yet. So the first instant is zero. Okay, what's the unit here? It's uh, zero seconds. Just like that, okay? This is the beginning of the measurement, which is usually zero. Usually in a chronometer, the beginning of the measurement starts with zero. It's like the stopwatch you have on your phones, for example, um, or those that, that are used in sports. So they always start from zero. Press start and wait a bit. So let me press start and just wait. 
So I've waited for like uh, one minute and a few seconds now. And as you can see, a chronometer, it could be digital, just like this one showing the numbers, or it could be like the big one here uh, where the needle lies. This is called analog, okay? So I will stop the time um, just randomly here or here. Okay, so I just stopped the time. It says here, press uh, pause or stop, indicate the second instant, T2. So T2, if I want to read it uh, off the digital chronometer, it says one hour, one minute, 23 seconds. So this indicates the minutes, this indicates the seconds, and this indicates the hours. So it's zero hours. 1 minute 23 seconds. So I can write 1 minute, okay, and 23 seconds, just like that. Now, if I want to read it off the uh, analog chronometer, okay, I can read the needles, right? So as you can see, this, the big needle indicates the let's say the seconds okay so it's almost 23 and the small needle right here it indicates the minutes so it's like one minute and a little bit so it's one minute okay it's not two minutes yet it's one minute and 23 seconds so it says here indicate the duration i know that the duration is delta t which is t2 right we said it minus t1 so what is T2 minus T1? 1 minute, 23 seconds, minus 0. It is 1 minute, okay, 23 seconds. I'm subtracting 0 from it. So what can we deduce from this? We can deduce that a chronometer is an instrument used to measure the duration, okay? Because its initial instant is always 0. So the time that it measures is the duration, as you can see, okay? So yeah, don't you forget, a chronometer is an instrument used to measure duration. So now that we talked about instance and duration, we talked about time, right? So let's get to know the units of time. So we've seen minutes, seconds, the SI unit of time, which is chosen by the International Standard System, is the seconds. So if I told you, find the time in the SI unit, then you have to find it in seconds, okay? But we have other units of time. We have hours, minutes, and seconds. Now we, now we will get to know how we convert from one unit to the other, like from hours to minutes. An hour is how many minutes? It's 60 minutes. So if I want to convert from hours to minutes, I have to multiply by 60. How about from minutes to seconds? I know that every six seconds make one minute. So also times 60. Great. Now, if I want to convert from hours to seconds, it would be 60 times 60. If you if you use a calculator here, you would say you would see that it is three thousand six hundred. So if I want to convert from hours to second, I can simply multiply by three thousand six hundred. How about the other way? If I want to convert like from seconds to minutes, if from minutes to seconds I multiply by sixty, from seconds to minutes I divide by sixty, from minutes to hours I also divide by sixty. From seconds to hours, I divide by 3,600. So these are the units of time. Do I have other units? Yes, I do. Let's see them in the notes here. I have a day. Days are also units of time, right? So one day equals to 24 hours. How about one month? Let's take it equal. An average one month equals to 30 days. How about one year? One year is equal to 365.25 days. Now let's solve this application. It says convert to seconds. Okay, so I have time in hours, minutes, maybe days, and I have to convert it to seconds. Okay, now I have this right in front of you, but you have to memorize it. 
okay? It's not given. You have to memorize it. So let's start. We have three hours, 20 minutes. Let's start with three hours. So I'm at hours. I need to convert to seconds. Where's seconds? Okay, so I need to multiply by 3,600. So I say three times 3,600. Great. Plus, don't forget the plus, as if we have like an invisible plus here. Plus 20 minutes. So the 20 minutes, it's in the minutes, I need to convert it to seconds. So I multiply by 60. So it's like 20 times 60, okay? And now we can use a calculator. So the answer would be 12,000 seconds. Now let's do part B. It says one day, 12 minutes, 35 seconds. We start with the one day. Now, what did we say? One day is how many hours? It's 24 hours. So to one day is 24 hours. Okay, can I continue with the plus now? No, this is still in hours. I have to convert it to seconds. I just converted one day. I know that one day, right, equals 20 four hours now i have to convert the hours into seconds which is time 3600 okay great now i put plus now i put plus 12 minutes in minute from minutes to seconds it's times 60 so 12 times 60 and then another plus plus 35 seconds it's already in seconds, so I just write it down. 35 equals. So I find the answer. It's uh, 87,155 seconds. And the last one, one hour, three minutes, five seconds. I think you can do it alone. So you can pause the video, do it, and then check your answer, okay? So I'm just gonna put the answer here. So from hours, two seconds times 3,600 plus three minutes, three times 60 plus five seconds, we keep it five, and then the answer is 3,785 seconds. When we talk about velocity, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? Maybe speed, maybe cars, airplanes, you know, something that's going fast, right? So we're going to do this uh, interactive activity as well. As I said, everything that says click me, it means you need to click him. OK, so you have that in your PowerPoint that I sent you. So I'm going to click that and let's do the activity together. OK, so I just clicked on this avatar. OK, and it took me to this page. As you can see, there is a man standing at zero. All I need, all you need to do now is to hold and drag the man from position zero meters to position 10 meters and then press the pose button. Okay, so there's a pose button at the bottom of the page. You can see it now, but the, it is there. So all you need to do is hold the man and then let it move. Okay, as fast as you want. And then you press pause. Great. So when you press pause, the man is at 10 meters now. So it says indicate the distance covered by the man. So if he started at zero and ended at 10, so the distance covered by this man is 10 meters. Now it says indicate the duration it took to cover the distance D. So the duration is right here. Okay, so it took him, let's say, approximately five seconds. Okay, so I'm going to write five seconds. This is like a chronometer. Okay, it's like a digital chronometer, like a stopwatch. So it uh, indicates the duration. Okay, so now it says to find the average velocity, which is what I actually want to find, substitute D and delta T in this equation. So I have this new equation. It says V average, average velocity equals to D divided by delta T, distance divided by duration. So what I have 10 meters, this is the distance, divided by five seconds, okay? So what's 10 divided by five? Do it in your calculator. It is two. 
So what's the unit? I have meters divided by seconds. So meters per seconds. Okay, so if D is expressed in meters and delta T in seconds, then the average speed is in meter per second. But if the distance is expressed in kilometers and delta T, which is the duration, is expressed in hours, then it would be, let's say, 10 kilometers, for example, divided by 5 hours, it would be 2, what do we have, kilometers per hour. So now we can put a definition for the average velocity. So the average velocity, its symbol is VAV, is the ratio of the covered distance to the duration of its motion. So it's distance over time. Now we saw that we have different units of uh, distances, right? So different units of distance, like the kilometers and the meters. Now, how can I convert from kilometers to meters? I multiply by 1,000, and from meters to kilometers, I divide by 1,000. How about the SI unit of distance? Can you guess? It is the meter. Okay, so uh, meters is the SI unit of distance. Now, the units of velocity. We saw that we have meters per second, but we also have kilometers per hour, okay? So how can I convert from kilometers per hour to meters per second? I divide by 3.6, okay? I don't multiply here, I divide. And the other way, from meters per second to kilometers per hour, I multiply by 3.6. But what is the SI unit of velocity? It is meters per second okay now the thing is guy guys if you want to know how or where did this come from you can check this video it explains how we got these values okay or you could meet me at the virtual office hour this week and we can do it together okay now in order for you to memorize the formula, which is V average equals distance over time, okay, you're, you're going to see a triangle similar to this one throughout the entire year, okay? So to make things easier for us, we put these in a triangle. See? Let's see. I have distance, speed, uh, velocity or speed, and the duration. If I want to find the velocity, it is equal to distance over time. See? Distance is above, time is below, so it's like distance over time. If I want to find the duration, what if I have the distance and I have the velocity? I need to find the duration. So duration equals also distance above over speed or velocity. See? Now, what if I want to find the distance? Distance equal velocity times duration. See how? So this makes things easier for you. So from this triangle, I can come out, I can come up with the three formulas, okay? First of all, D is the distance, which is in meters. Uh, V is the average velocity in meters per second, and delta T is the duration in seconds. Now, these are the SI units. I can also use for the distance kilometers, and for the time or duration, I can use hours. And then what's the unit of the average velocity? Kilometers per hour, okay? So I can use these or those. So the three form formulas that I can get from this triangle is that speed or velocity equals distance over duration or duration equals distance over velocity and then distance equals uh, average velocity times duration, okay? Um, this is like a little game where you can play it. You can click on this and it will take you to the game so you can practice these formulas. Okay, so it's like it will give you two values and then you have to get the third one. So let's solve an application so that things become more clear for us. 
A car travels for one kilometer. Now we need to analyze the given, okay? Not just read it. So what is the one kilometer? It is the distance. So we write D above it, okay? So that we know that the distance is given. So a car travels for one kilometer along a straight flat road with an average velocity of 20 meters per second. So I have the average velocity also given. Let's see part one. Calculate the duration. So I need delta T in seconds needed for the car to cover the one kilometer. Okay, so what is the formula? Let's draw the triangle, okay? When you draw the triangle, things become really easy. So I have V average, I have distance, and I have duration, okay? So I need to find the duration. Duration equals distance over V average, right? So you can first, if you want to write the main rule, which is velocity equals distance over time and then the time is equal to you can substitute these two it's equal to the distance over velocity or you can find it from this triangle let's continue now we can substitute um wait a second the distance is in kilometers and the speed is in meters per second and i need the time in seconds so time i need it in seconds and the velocity is in meters per second. So the distance must be in what? If this is meters per second and this is second, this must be in meter, right? So what should I do? I need to convert the distance. So I have the distance one kilometer. I need to convert it to meters, okay? So how do I convert from kilometers to meters? I multiply by thousand. So I multiply by 1,000, now it is in meters. So it's 1,000 meters. Now I can substitute, perfect. So the answer would be in seconds because these two cancel each other and the answer is 50 meters per second. Part two, it says find the speed in kilometer per hour. Okay, so I need to find it in kilometer per hour. I have it in meter per second. How, I, how can I convert, let's see. This is kilometer per hour and this is meter per second. Okay, how can I convert from meter per second to kilometer per hour? I multiply by 3.6. Okay, so I multiply by 3.6 and the answer is 180 kilometers per hour. Okay, I hope it's clear. Just a little note, in case I have the average speed in kilometer per hour, and the time must be then in hours and the distance must be then in kilometers okay so these units go together kilometers hours kilometers per hours meter per second meter second okay i cannot use meter per second meter and hour see so each three go together okay so that is it we just finished the first part of the lesson this week i hope you guys understood it and i'll meet you guys in the zoom live uh, so that we can go through the lecture again and solve the worksheet so take care and bye bye